first thing that's on my mind Taste that bag today Taste that bag today Taste that bag I can't waste none of my time What's happening, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening You already know what time it is, baby Another episode of the Taste That Bag podcast And I'm locked in the vault With a very special guest today Yes, Lord None other than the man himself, Antonio Payola. What's happening, baby? Yo, yo, yo. What's good? What's good? Oh man, man. I'm uh, I'm excited, bro. You know what I'm saying? I've been seeing you grind, and I've been seeing you working hard. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just excited to be able to sit down and have a conversation with you, bro, and find out what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? Like I know I ain't the only one that's been seeing you work. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of want to see what you got going on and, you know what I'm saying, what's your plans are, man, and, you know what I'm saying, just have a great conversation. You did? Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a blessing yeah, to be here, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've had a we've had the opportunity to have a lot of offline conversations, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've heard a little bit here and there from you, but, to be able to sit down today and just really have a good conversation. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited about it, bro. So without further ado, we're going to jump right on in. So Antonio Payo, if you could, so, bro, you know what I'm saying? Give me your background. You know what I'm saying? Like, where did you start? I'm a Russ, Texas, baby. You know what I'm saying? East Texas, uh, 903. Yeah, man. Born and raised in Russ, man. Russ, Texas. Yeah. That's cool because a lot of times, man, you know, you know, I get a little slack online because people will say I'm only interviewing Tyler artists. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's only so many interviews I can do. And I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, see who is who and, and really tap into East Texas, bro. So, you know what I'm saying, to, to have you here. You know what I'm saying? And, and being from Rusk, Texas, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited about this. So so you originally from Rusk, Texas? Yeah. Okay. And Rusk, how far is Rusk from Tyler? We about 45 miles south. Okay. Probably about 45 minutes to one hour travel. Yeah. Okay. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. So, you know, you are an artist. You rap. And you sing as well. So what got you into just the art period? Like, where was your start at? Really, my start was, I'm a church boy, you know. So, I mean, uh, you know, growing up in a church, you know, with the choir and stuff. But uh, I'd probably say my start would be with my cousin Young Prez, man. Uh, Dope man, he's a he's a raw artist man all the way around man. When you talk about being versatile, I grew up watching him. You know what I'm saying? Stuck stuff to stuff to pieces of paper in the in the in the tape and, and record over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, th that way man. So yeah. I just I just watched him and my cousin Russia man uh, record, and then you know they let me get in the game man. I was th that was it. So that was before like starting to like get into music at church, or was that during the same time frame or same time frame you know it's just you know you, you got to have an on and off switch you know you can't talk about the same things yeah 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 so okay so you started recording then as you started writing and stuff and, and just getting in the studio and recording I, I mostly was just just freestyling and uh to be dead honest with you you know uh my cousin wrote my first rap and then you know i started practicing myself and i was like this, this really ain't that bad. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. it was just a love from you know, love for it instantly. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I'm assuming you also was able to do as far as practicing the craft as well, like in church too, right? Yeah, yeah. See, I sang in church. You know, uh, I was one of the ones who, you know, had to find their voice and had build confidence in it. You know, you see these kids these days. On YouTube, they blowing. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. I was I was a silent one, trying to get my trying to get my notes together. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you was standing up there in the choir. It's like, what what you saying? Yeah. Tenor? You saying tenor? Man, look, man. I, Alto. Tenor. 
tunnel? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> was the church in Rusk as well? Church was in Rusk. Uh, church was in Shady Grove, uh, uh, Blunt's Chapel. Yeah, and uh, really and truthfully, you know, we, we it was different churches because my daddy is a preacher as well. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we travel, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so considering that you from Rusk, Antonio, like, are there a lot of artists in Rusk, Texas? There's a lot of artists. A lot of artists that started before me. Really? Okay, okay. So, like, what's the scene out there? The scene sticks. Can't get more country than where we at. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but, you know, we got our hoods, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the D.C., call it the Dead End. You know, we got Shady Grove, Ellum Grove, you know, um, the Red Claw out that way. Just, just you know, yeah, just it's a few different sections. You feel me? Do they all kind of like, you know what I'm saying, as artists, do they all kind of collab with each other? Or? Yeah, see, the biggest the biggest group down that way is uh, STB, the Small Town Ballers. Okay. You know, uh, that's really where we grew up jamming, you know, uh, and then you got you got other little cliques, you know, that then branched off that that was small town ballers. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And and they still love really truthfully everybody down there is. You know what I'm saying? Because we grew up on that. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Okay. 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 So, so you sing. So you started singing in church, and you just kept working on the craft. So, like, at what point, like, would you feel you started to take your craft serious? Really and truthfully, I didn't really start taking my craft serious until I got out of school. Got out of school, man. Okay. Yeah, I hit up uh my big bro, Big Rand, Colin Rambo. Uh, he had his lab, and um, I was just like, you know, I, I worked with him. I was like, hey, I got something. I want to go record it. He said, you know, you good for it. I came over and recorded it. He looked back at me like, you got you one. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that was the first one. We shot a little old video to it. And uh, even though, you know, it wasn't the best of quality video or music-wise, you know what I'm saying, we made it happen. We made the best of, out of what we had. Yeah. And, and that video right there really brought everybody together because everybody was separated on different paths and everybody came together. You could look at it right now. It's called It Won't Stop, featuring C2. That yeah. video right there brought everybody together. It was a beautiful day in the hood. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. A beautiful day. So so from there on, that's when you really started to, like, really get into it and really just take it serious and really just, you know what I'm saying, start pumping out music. That was it. Okay. Okay. So I guess quick, quick, quick sidestep not only are you an artist but you're also an entrepreneur as well yes lord so how big because you know typically you don't see a lot of artists who are also entrepreneurs as well right like right as far as your entrepreneurial journey can you tell me a little bit about that and like what exactly it is that you do i am a uh a business owner you know uh i run 18 willows Okay. okay. Silverbacks Transportation, LLC. Silverback Transportation? Yes, Lord. It's got like a gorilla face on there or something? Yes, sir. Okay, I done seen that on the road. I done seen yes, that on the road when I've been rolling, man. I've been seeing the old Silverback. Okay, so. That's us. So you, so you have your own trucking company? Got my own trucking company. Um, I'm running a kennel, a bullet kennel. You feel me? Okay. And, uh, yeah, I got some more things, you know what I'm saying? The works right now, man, entrepreneurship, man, it's just a it's just a thing where you know you know about this, man. You just gotta, you know, make sure you got different, you know, revenues and avenues and, and ways of getting money. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? Cause yeah. you know, one one way get turned off, you gotta you gotta be able to survive out here. You feel what I'm saying? Facts, bro. Yeah. Facts, bro. You know, a lot of times I tell people that one of the secrets of the rich is to have multiple streams of revenue you know what i'm saying right on and the more streams that you have you know what i'm saying the the more financially stable you are so that way of something or a couple things ain't popping for you still got a couple other things that you know what i'm saying is 
is rolling and flowing until those other things catch back up because sometimes, man, in business, you know what I'm saying, things become seasonal. You know what I'm saying? You always right, have right. your ups and your downs, you know what I'm saying, your highs and your lows. So, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like you got some multiple streams. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, how big of an impact has that, as far as you being an entrepreneur, played a role in your life as far as, like, your family is concerned? Well, let me give a shout-out to uh, uh, McMahon real quick and my brother Austin. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, I had no interest in any of the CDL, any of that. Yeah. My bro pushed me. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, shout-out to Gil. Uh, you know, he was talking to me, chopping up with me. I'm like, all right, whatever, what. You know what I'm saying? I was really in the streets of Dallas, you feel what I'm saying? Not, yeah. not you know, hustling, but hustling. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was like, hey, look, there's money over here, too. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I kind of turned to it, looked into it, and I was just like, shh, bet. I went and got my CDL, you feel me? Yeah. I decided that, you know, after working for a few people that I didn't want to work for nobody. You feel me? Okay. So I went and got my own truck. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. And it was up from there, and it was stuck there. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because, like, man, a lot of times I share information with people, like, on the entrepreneurial side, you know, with trucking. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, sometimes you tell them about it a couple times, and it's like, oh, okay, I, you know, I hear you. But it's like they never, like, really, like, implement it or act on it or really research it. Like, right. What, how long? I mean, was it a situation where you just jumped right into it when you heard about it, or, like, did it have to grow on you? It was growth, man. Like I said, uh, I really, I really got a uh, a alley oop from my partner. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, he was able to bless me with some knowledge of the business side of it. You feel me? So I can't say I done all this myself. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I'm a humble man. I just, like I said, I just, I'm blessed for what I got. You feel what I'm saying? And the people that 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 helped me play this role. You feel what I'm saying? And help me help me along this journey. Yeah. We still all tight. We all still get money. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but yeah, man. Uh, but you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So, you know, I was blessed with with some knowledge on some of this stuff. But I took the reins. You feel me? And yeah. made it happen too. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. I can relate to that, bro. Because I mean, I I would be a liar to say that when I first heard about it, I you know I immediately jumped on it. I mean, I did, but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like I did, but. Things didn't pan out initially. So it was kind of like, you know what I'm saying, like lost and forgotten. And then, you know, I had a I had a couple partners came back and chopped it up with me again. And it just started growing on me. And I was like, you know what? Like, man, let me let me go ahead and try it again. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, it it, it was the avenue that I needed in order to be able to leave, you know what I'm saying, the the What's the word I want to the, – the job force, the, the, the workforce. You right, know what right. I'm saying? Now, I noticed that you say, like, you started out – you got your CDL and you started out driving for a couple for a couple companies. Like, what was it that you didn't like about working for someone else that really propelled you to go be your own boss? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm just going to be real with you, man. <laughs> you know, the schedule, the pay, yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, I was in, I was back and forth to Dallas. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Making quick money. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know how it is, man. Trying to trying to uh, transition back to boom. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it was more, you know, the money. And then I'm gonna be real with you. The last actual job that I worked, it wasn't even really just the fact that I didn't want to work for him, man. He really was motivational to me. Yeah. Um, He's an African American black male as well, and uh, he owns his own uh, oil field company, man. And uh, actually, you know, like I said, he really just gave me a push. What, whether he know it or not, I just looked up to him, and I was just like, "Yeah, I want some of that." You feel what I'm saying? I want, I want, I want, I want to be able to do what he doing. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, a lot of times people be looking like, a lot of people be like, "Oh, nigga, copy me, such, 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 such." Nah, player, it's motivation. And that's what I want to do with others as well. You feel me? So I was motivated, man. Shout out to Mr. Andrew. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Over there, Combined Oil Field Services, man, in Henderson, Texas, man. Yeah. They really, they really, um, really motivated me to to do my own thing. It wasn't nothing really just personal. You feel me? Yeah. But um, 
I was just like, yeah. So that's that's how that's how that's how it started, man. Yo, a lot of times I hear that all the time, bro. It's like someone will do something and then they'll say, oh, man, they copying me, man. They trying to ride my wave and this and that. And I, I think that's one perspective that a person can take. However, I, I'm similar to you. I look at it on the flip side. I look at it as it's not so much as copying in that, in that sense. It's more so like, man, you just motivated somebody. You inspired somebody to do something. Right that they weren't doing because they saw you doing it and feel like, okay, I can do this. You know what I'm saying? And it's important, you know what I'm saying, to be able to help people grow. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I definitely can relate to that. That's so, growth, man. That's growth within yourself. You feel what I'm saying? When you can when you can turn that, to me, that's that's a young that's a young mind right there. You feel what I'm saying? Right. When you can switch that over and be like, I right, maybe everybody ain't out for me. Maybe right. everybody ain't trying to copy me. Maybe right. everybody ain't trying to step on my toes. Uh, and, and do this and, that and the other. You know what I'm saying? When you can be like, well, sh- regardless, you know what I'm saying? Hey, look, I'm going to do this and hope I motivate some people. Yo. That's growth within yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's a grown mind to me. You feel facts, me? Facts, facts, bro. So, you know, I understand how it has, it has really impacted your family, but not only your family, how has it helped you? And I know I'm kind of jumping the gun, but how has you being a business owner and an entrepreneur how has they helped you as far as like pushing your music? Well, I will say this, you know, um, when you're doing it, you know, I've gotten to a status to where I ain't gonna even say it's a status. Right now, I'm blessed to to be able to have drivers. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not in a truck. I'm just behind the scenes. You feel me? Doing paperwork and and uh, you know making sure that we abide by the rules of the and the laws of the. Uh, or the, or the road, you feel what I'm saying? D-O-T. D-O-T, you know how it go, man. So, actually, man, I'm just, you know, I just finished the audit, man. I'm just like, I'm glad them folks off my back. You feel what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's just, it's just, it, it helped me because, of course, it's putting my money in my pocket, you feel me? Right. But, you know, still, though, you can't go crazy with it. You feel what I'm saying? The different avenues that, that, that I'm able to, you know, connect, collect revenue with has helped me as well it's just because i only pay myself a certain amount of money you feel what i'm saying right no matter what you know just like i knew yep. that's the truck money you feel right, what i'm saying right that's the truck money so you know it's helped for sure yeah you know and i i am pretty open you know so i can make things happen you feel me yeah 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 so so like just just in general like with a trucking company like Let's say somebody out there say, hey, you know what, man? I'm looking for an opportunity to be able to get into a business. and You know what I'm saying? Maybe I want to get into the trucking line. Like, what could a person expect to make on average? You know what I'm saying? Like, on, on like, a, a yearly average. Like, what could they expect to potentially make if they was in a truck? Driving a truck or owning a truck? Um... I would say owning it, being an owner operator. Being an owner operator or being an owner operator and the owner of a company? Uh Hmm, that's a good question, bro. Because you know, you could be an owner operator and work up underneath somebody else. You right, you right, you right, you right. And typically in them situations, you know a ten percent will come out for a dispatching fee. Yeah. So I guess I guess like doing your own dispatching for yourself and owning your own truck all up under the umbrella of your company. Man, you gonna make one of these niggas try to dive me upside my head, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we don't want that. We don't want that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can go low. You can go hey, real hey, low. I stay strapped up now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey, I own plenty of pistols and rifles, man. <laughs> So just be, just be careful Russ. approaching me. You feel me? He is from Russ. Yeah, man, you we hunt, I mean? man. Look, <laughs> hey, we use dogs to hunt. We don't even gotta take oh, our gun. Be man. careful now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh nah, yeah. man, on, on the real though, this depends on how hard you want to run, man. You know, uh, man. To be honest with you, bro, I feel like you know a, a good week, a good week could consist of an average of you know eight bands a week. That's what one like one truck. It's one truck, and that's CDL like driving over the road and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that CDL driving over the road. You know okay. what I'm saying? A race change, you know, through the seasons we run flatbed, 
So, uh-huh. uh, you know, that's 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 an average. You know, right now, you know, it's, it's hot. People want to, you know, it's, it's buildings being built. It's a lot of stuff being that we got to carry. So, you know, iron, pipe, all that. So, you know, rates are up right now. So, yeah. you know, them numbers, you know, they up. I ain't yeah. going to tell, tell say what it is, but, for sure, for sure. you know, but they, they up. You feel what I'm saying? saying? This is what you would consider peak season, huh? Man. Okay. If it stay like this all year round, man, yeah. sh- you know, it'll be lovely. Yeah. For so, for so, for so, for so. So, 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 not only is entrepreneur impacting your family in a positive way, to where you have something that you can also leave, like your kids, 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 right? Generational wealth. Yes. That's some real taste that bad shit, right? Real talk. It's also helping you with your music as well. Now, that's interesting because a lot of people look to sign deals because of a lack of financial backing, right? Right. Um, credit. Like, how does credit help in this situation as well? Man, credit Credit is key, man. Um, since, since I'm giving my shout-out. Shout-out shout out to Alex McCain, man. Uh, elite credit resource out of uh, Jasper, Texas, man. Really out of Tyler is where they branched out of, but that's where he's from over that way. Uh, Jasper, uh, uh, what's it called? Newton. Anyways, uh, yeah, he helped get my credit up. You feel what I'm saying? But I, I can't, I, I can't say I started this company off credit. Yeah. It, it didn't happen that way. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but yeah, but it's important though. Yeah. It's important. Like, hey, my kids, by, by, when they, by the time they're 16, I'm going to know how to, you know what I'm saying, get them right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they're they going to be, they're gonna be graduating with 800 credit scores. You feel me? Nah, real talk. Like, man, I, you know, I, I learned a little while back, man, that, you know, the easiest way to help your kids, granted, that per, that parent or that guardian, you know, their credit is good, right? But one of the ways that I found out was the easiest way to help their kids was add their kids on their credit card as an authorized user. Piggybacking. You did what I'm saying? And yes, Lord. That helps them have their same reporting history. So that way, when they graduate high school, you know, they have a really good credit score. You know what I'm saying? Which is important to have as well. When you can use that to, you know, start a business where you don't have to use right. your own capital. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's, that's important, too. I, I thought when I found that out, man, I was like, damn, why I didn't know that? You know what I'm saying? I'm so used to hearing people saying that. You know, their parents put bills in their names and stuff and didn't pay, you know what I'm saying, and got them in right, trouble right, with the credit. Right. <laughs> like, man, you mean to tell me we can give them a way out now, you know what I'm saying? Real like, talk. Like, that was cool when I found that out. So, yeah. So, so with the music, right, like, you took some time off, though, huh? I took, like, about three years off, bro. Okay. So, what made you take three years off? Uh, I'm a father first, you feel me? So, uh, you know, it takes money to do this. I didn't feel right, you know what I'm saying, putting out money. And, you know, I got kids out here, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was more of a guilt with my conscience, you feel what I'm saying, of not necessarily the time took it away because I get plenty of time, but the, the extra money – I was taking it out of what I was making, which wasn't a lot at that time. And, you know, I was still able to make the small things happen, but I was feeling guilty because I wanted to make the bigger things happen. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was more of it was more of that. And 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 also I was trying to figure out a way to perfect my craft, bro. And and to find my own lane, my own sound, mm. and also try to learn the business side of it, which it's just, it's just. I ain't gonna say hit and miss. It's just you, you gotta find the right person to give you that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause everybody, everybody ain't gonna do that. You feel me? Yeah. And uh, it was just more of me just trying to find me. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 better me, without the guilty conscience of taking away from my loved ones. You feel me? Facts, facts, bro. You gotta take care of how first. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. And then once you got home in order, then you can definitely start to pursue, you know what I'm saying, those other endeavors. So I definitely, I, I, shit, I understand that, bro. So, Already. So during that three years, you took those three years to, to get everything in order and find you at the same time. And then 
you came back out. Now, how how long has it been now since you've come back out? You know what I'm saying, and, and gotten back into that lane of like, hey, I'm here. You know what I'm saying, like I'm I'm turning up and I'm doing my thing. Like, about how long has it been now? Man, um, about about three months. About three months, I was dropping things. You know what I'm saying. Slowly, I just dropped that coming for mine too. It's out on all major platforms. You feel me? But I will say this is a good tape. You know, hosted by TB. Shout out DJ TB. Uh, he been a real one from the start. You feel what I'm saying? It's my sure. boy. Uh, but y'all got a lot of the old me on there because I had a lot of music. I just needed to get it out so I can bless y'all what y'all hearing now. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I came out, I came out aggressive, you feel me? Yeah. I got videos in the vault. Uh, I did one a while back with uh with Eric Ross, Swan Nation, and here here recently I've been working with Twan nonstop. Yeah. You feel me? I'm waiting for him to get back so he can get back to work. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? I don't yeah. know if he left yet, but when he whenever he get back, we getting back to work. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. And uh I've been in the studio, shout out to Orlando Williams, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh a lot of the tape, a lot of the music that was on my last tape was uh was uh recorded by mix and mixed by Robbie. Shout out to Robbie, you feel what I'm saying? Okay. He's a real uh, important part of East Texas, man. Yeah. Uh, I will say that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, uh I've been I I came out aggressive with it, man, because I'm trying to prove a point. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm also Three years, bro. Nigga backed up. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I'm backed up, and uh, I got a formula I'm going by, man. I just gonna be. I gotta be more aggressive. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. I ain't waiting for them eggs to grow, bro. I'm, I'm look. I'm cloning them. You feel me? Yeah. I'm. I'm but if it's artificial, however it might be. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Shit. Yeah. You know. I'm. I'm. I'm making them eggs pop out. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of what we hearing right now is not recently written and, and and stuff like that this is this is music that you've been kind of having in the woodworks yeah yeah okay interesting because i mean like you know i've been checking out you know some of your music bro and like i'm like damn bro payola got some you know what i'm saying like i didn't Appreciate know that, that nah for real for real like i didn't know like this wasn't like anything recently like recently written you know what i'm saying like right this is music that you kind of been sitting on and you releasing it you know what i'm saying so so yeah so so you releasing it and you know you dropping visuals you know what i'm saying right and i'm seeing a lot of visuals come out so like at what point do you think that you would get to to where you would be able to release like some some new payout uh, next week, two weeks. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to hit y'all with a visual. You feel what I'm saying? And then, uh, see, man, I'm, I want to drop another tape on y'all. The tape the tape going to be called Anointed. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, see, I got to come up for mine one and come up for mine two, but I'm going to go ahead and veer off a little bit, and I'm going to drop, drop a tape called Anointed. But, you know what I'm saying, I'm seeing people really – going hard and just dropping singles and I think I'm gonna follow that. I'm gonna follow that. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm gonna be hitting y'all with singles left and right with the visuals. Yeah. I probably have thirty videos by the end of this year, G. I'm not I'm I'm not doing no plan. I'm 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 moving like that. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of visuals, man, you just dropped a visual expectation. It was shy by Twan visuals. Right. And also too, you released it on under half paint. Yeah, yeah, it was a little investment, a little investment, man. Just trying to see if I could get a few fans or some feedback. Like I said, that song is a uh, two, almost three years old itself. You feel what I'm saying? Wow. So um, I really just was just, you know, I'm trying to see where the feedback gonna come from. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to see where it's gonna come from and see which angle I'm gonna take next. But I don't feel like there is a right angle. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just going to keep on drilling it off in there. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, really and truthfully, you know, uh, like I said, I know we didn't have a few uh, offline conversations. You know, uh, I, I've been blessed to uh, get some knowledge from you as well. For sure. Uh, and uh, like I said, I appreciate that with the uh, with the whole monetizing and also the whole running ads and stuff. 
So uh, that's my next move, you feel me? Because like I said, I am from the sticks. Yeah. You feel me? We might have a population of 5,000, but it is a, a state hospital and a prison down there, which yeah. includes our population. It's not really much down there, man. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. before I left, I had a little buzz down this way, you feel me? Uh, shout out to Pookie, man, because he always show love. He been booking me for a long time, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, here and there, you know what I'm saying? But... You know, like I said, when I when I when I put it down, you feel me? I'm having to start all the way back over. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like I feel like I'm still that man. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but yeah, man. Uh, the video high, bro. Appreciate that's, you, bro. That's a, that's a hot ass video, bro. I like the song. I like the video. Shout like, out to one, man. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real, bro. That shit was dope, bro. Question: Where does the name Antonio Paola come from? Well, I got some oil field history, you feel me? Okay. My name is Tony, so the Mexicans, shout out my essays, they used to call me Antonio, you feel me? Okay. And uh, they knew I was going to get that money, even though payola don't mean that. Yeah. They used to holler out payola, payola, you feel <laughs> what I'm saying? So I put the two together. Payola, payola, yeah. payola. They yeah. going to be like, I'm spending for real. So I used to always run around there talking about, <laughs> man, I'm trying to get paid, you know. Yo. Yeah, you know, that's everybody look at me, they were like, you know, that's that's what I said. I'm trying to get paid. Yeah. And payola. I'm yeah. like, okay, well, you yeah. know. I looked it up. It don't mean that, but, you know, it sounded good. So yeah. that's what we rolling with. Yeah. It's crazy that you say that, right? Because I remember, man, 2019, I was working at my job. And, you know, it was highly commission-based. And, you know, I was always driven and focused on being able to maximize that bag, bro. You know what right. I'm saying? And um, I would just find myself walking around and, you know, when we would talk about getting some money, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and focusing on what we would need to do to be able to hit those goals and metrics and stuff like that to really maximize the bag, I would always say, man, chase that bag. Chase that bag. Yeah. Chase that bag. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because little did I know, you know what I'm saying, that chase that bag would actually become chase that bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just – it was just something that I would say every day, man, to motivate people, keep myself motivated because that's what I was focused on. And i never forget, bro, like, you know what I'm saying, I was looking it up online one day, and I was like, man, let me look up Chase That Bag and see if it's available. And I looked up Chase That Bag, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it, bro. Like, ChaseThatBag.com. That was the first – before I even looked up the business name, Chase That Bag Entertainment LLC, Right. I just looked up the website, chasethatbag.com, bro. And when I saw that that website was available, I knew it I knew it had to be, you know what I'm saying, destiny. destiny. You know what I'm saying? Because typically, like, that's a, that's something we say all the time. We, we, or we might say chase the bag. But chase that bag, bro, when I saw it was available, I said, oh, yeah, man, it's, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is destiny right here. And, um, you know, man, it just, you know, me and it was intertwined and we were one. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So I can definitely relate to this. So, so yeah, so it came from a situation of, man, just being driven, man, to really maximize your bag. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Interesting. That's what's up. So, you know, being from Rusk and being someone who, and I'm not going to say you're the only one because I don't know, right, but being someone who takes this crap seriously, to the point of investing, you know, we hear a lot of talks online about should artists invest or should artists pay for stuff and and all this different type of, you know what I'm saying, things like, how do you feel about being an artist and investing in your craft to be able to really propel yourself as an artist and really get yourself out there? Like, how do you feel about investing is it something that we should do should we not do it should we do it sometimes is there certain situations we should do it like what are your thoughts on that as far as investing as an artist it's a must and this is coming from you as a businessman right it's it's a must i mean uh just like the saying it take money to make money you feel what i'm saying yeah so it's a must i mean if you if you if if this is what you take serious, you're going to put your all in it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, certain circumstances, you feel what I'm saying? I, I understand that, too. We got families and stuff out here. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But 
it's a must, man. I mean, it, it ain't no other way around it, man. You gotta have, you gotta, you gotta invest in your studio time. You gotta invest in your, in your music videos. You gotta invest in, you know, uh, uh, paying the DJs here and there. You gotta invest in, you know, what I'm saying, uh, uh, running ads is something I'm finna get had to get used to running the ads. You got you got to invest in everything. You're tired, paying for the models, paying for the videos. I mean, just everything, man. It's, it's all a, it's all an investment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you trying to create your image to where everybody else see your creative image. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So I mean, <laughs> you either gonna do it or you not. I don't believe in that that that. Oh, somebody got lucky. You feel me? Mm. I don't I don't believe in that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they invested. I know some dudes out here where I'm just like, man, how in the hell did they make it? That song is trash. You know what? But it's I, the investment. I say that all the time. Pal, I say that all the time. I say, how many times do we hear people say, like, man, that artist made it. Man, that artist is trash. Or, man, that artist ain't got but one song. Like, how is he popping like that? Like, it's because of the business side. And I think. Right. You know, me personally, I think that, and I could be wrong, but I think a lot of times artists who don't invest like that, I don't think they they realize that they are a business. And there is no business that you can run that does not require an investment. I don't care if it's a dollar. Hell, you got to invest something. You know what I'm saying? Now, with music, like, music is a situation where you have to heavily invest a lot more because of, you know, things will cost more. You know, you're dealing with a lot of digital type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, digital different type of things, like videos and stuff. Like, man, that stuff is not, it's not cheap. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, if you want to be able to really prepare yourself as an artist, you know, those things you have to invest in. You have to invest in a lot of different things in order to be able to get yourself there. You know what I'm saying? And, a lot of times, I just think artists don't look at themselves as an actual business. I mean, like, a lot of times they don't have a DBA or any type of corporation entity for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And I think that if they understood the business, if they understood something as simple as that, being able to, because it's the thing, right? If they operated as an artist, I mean, as a business, having a DBA or some type of corporation, then everything that they're investing in, they're literally able to keep those transactions, whether it be via cash out, whether it be via bank statements, whether it be via receipts, and write those things off, meaning subtracting that from the total income, right? If they didn't right. make no money, then even co- that's, that's cool too. Let's say you didn't make no money. But now you have, you know, let's say over the year you spent $20,000 right. in music. Well, that's $20,000 negative. And negative means that you wrote it off. Write it off means simply subtracting, right? So now you're negative twenty thousand. You didn't make any money. You're negative twenty thousand. But what that means is when it's when you when you file those taxes with your tax preparer, right? And when when it's time to get the tax money back, you're gonna get some money. And then what do you do with that? You invest. You reinvest it right back into your business. Actually, that might be your first or first and second quarter budget. You know what I'm saying? Like, that can really help you, like, make those moves for the next year. You know what I'm saying? Like, just even right. getting into forecasting, like, what is my budget and what moves am I going to make next year? You know what I'm saying? I think that if we had that approach as artists, I think that, you know what I'm saying, it would, it would probably be a lot more beneficial to them. Most definitely. So, so you coming back out hard. You talked about thinking about taking that single route, which I I strongly uh, am an advocate for. I come from the old school of dropping projects, you know, dropping a project, a mixtape, an album, an EP. And one thing that I heard interesting was with singles, dropping a single weekly on Spotify, Apple Music, et cetera, different streaming platforms helps really get the algorithms working in your favor. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and being able to kind of really show up on their release radar and stuff like this. So, you know, I think with them singles, man, I think that'll really help you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm going to go with that route. Absolutely. So I see I see you got on a shirt. It's a pretty fly shirt, by the way. Appreciate it, appreciate it. <laughs> Loving the color core. You really coordinate. No, man, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Know you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, it, 
I mean, did you like how did you come up with it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what was the what was the what was the path that you took to really come up with like some merch like that? Well, you know, you want people to know who you are, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I've been doing this for, for a little bit, you know, uh, as far as pressing up merch. Uh, not myself, but getting it pressed up. Yeah. <sighs> Part of being an entrepreneur. Right. Hey, it's went, branding. Hey, went, went, went and got my own machine, you feel me? Yeah. Uh, pass it down to good hands, you feel me? Yeah. Uh, shout out to her. She yeah. keep me fresh, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Scrub business. Yeah. So, so like, do you have a graphic designer that does, like, your graphics for you, and then you just press them up? I, uh, I got this design in my LOK design uh, from David Riddle. Okay. Yeah, shout okay. out to him. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I tell everybody, man, like, one of the things that you can do, like, when you're in branding, like, one of the best things that you can do, man, is that you're a really good graphic designer. You know what I'm saying? Like, Supporting. man, bro, like having a good graphic designer, man, that really helps with the brand. It helps you push out stuff. Bro, that shit is fly, bro. And I appreciate that, bro, bro. Damn, that's fly. I like that. I like that. You got some more appreciate merch? It. You got some more merch on the way? Man, I got so much merch, man. I'm just waiting for everybody to buy it up. Man, say, how much that shirt right there going for? You this know one what right here can go for 25 because it got the shadow. Mr. Okay. Plain Antonio Paolo going to go for 20 and the LOK is going to go for 15 Okay. If you want the shadow behind the LOK, it's going to go for 20 Okay. I also got face mask. I got girl boy shorts. You feel me? You know? Okay. Yeah, you that got way. the whole wardrobe. That way. That way. Okay. Yes, That's what's up. You know, it's crazy, bro. Like, I remember when I got into my merch, um, and my main focus was to really, like, have merch from head to toe. And I'm finna right. give, I'm finna give some game away today, man. I hope they tune in to your interview, man. I'm gonna give some game away. Bless me. So I was like, man, you know what? I wish I had some sneaks, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, right I wish I wish I had me some sneaks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really wanted to be like on some chase that bag shit from head to toe. Sure no. So I got online one day. You know, I started looking online, man. And, I stumbled across a site, a website. The website, pretty much what they did was they created custom shoes. And not just any shoe, right? Right. They actually created the same style of sneakers as the designers, such as Gucci and Versace, et cetera, right? A lot of people don't know that designer, the designer sneakers like that are made in a place called Lamarck, Italy. Right. It's the shoe capital of the world is what they call it. The same place makes the same shoes in that location. They use calf skin leather, which is what the designer shoes are made from. They use um, genuine Italian suede. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. They got the different animal prints, bro. Like, like I'm talking about, like, not the real animal skin or fur or whatever. It's It looks like it. Right. But it's actually the hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, the jaguar hair. They got the python. They got the different color python, bro. They got the... Man, bro, say. So, I stumbled up on the site. I started putting stuff together. Even sold a pair. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And um, it's interesting because shortly after, and I swear I'm not making this up, bro. People would think I'm, I'm on some most of but I'm really not. Shortly after, I saw um, someone who is very well known for being an entrepreneur do the same exact thing. Master P. Oh, yeah? Master P talks about entrepreneurship all the time. King of it. He has... Um, a line called Munyati. Okay? Go look this stuff up, man. Look up Munyati.com, man. You know, I'm giving him some free publicity. So, if you go on his website, you're going to see a series of sneakers. These sneakers are a byproduct of the website that I stumbled upon before he stumbled upon it. 
I have the sneakers and the dates prior to him doing the same exact thing, bro. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, right. you can go in, customize your sneak, bro, and lock that particular pattern and colorway in. And now you have your own sneaker. It has it has Slide. it has the it has the thing on the side where you can insert your your logo. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm talking about, bro. Like it's legit. Like it's it's legit, legit, and it's cheaper than the design of sneakers, even though it's right, made right. with the same material. You know what I'm saying? And when I saw that, bro, I was just like, damn. Like to be able to have like a sneaker line like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I think, right. you know, the reason why I tell this story is because I think it's all about one's mindset. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it, 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 it starts with a thought. Manifestation starts with a thought. And from there, you know, you manifest it into the physical reality. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So, you know, I think a lot of times, man, we have to think bigger than what we do. You know what I'm saying? Which is what causes us to have merch. You know what I'm saying? Which just causes us to be able to say, hey, man, let me start thinking about branding myself. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so I know that you're going to start working on visuals and stuff like that. Um, but apart from, apart from the visuals, getting back into the music, saying that you sing, like, are we – can we expect like some 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 records where like you just like blowing on there? Cause I keep hearing about the pipes, you know what I'm saying? That's, I keep hearing about the vocal, the yeah. vocal cords. See, that's 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 what's coming up. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. And it's gonna be here real shortly. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be knocking at y'all door with that. Okay. I'm, I'm at your front door with it already. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. I already, I already, I already, I already. So I'm sure you'll be, you've been following, you know, the East Texas culture music scene. Like, what are your thoughts right. on the culture right now? You said what? What are your thoughts on the culture right now? Just the current state of the East Texas rap scene. My current thoughts on it, well, right now we got somebody who 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 then kicked the door down. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, he got it open. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Seco Pete, somebody put me on him not too long ago, right up the road from me. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, he doing some big things, bro. Uh, salute to him. Uh, like I said, I don't know him, uh, but I will say salute to him. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm always a congratulator. You feel me? Never a hater. That's so yeah, man, that's motivation. That's back to one of them things. That's what I call motivation. You feel me? So. Yeah, so even him gave me a step of motivation. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but as far as the rest of it, we there, we close. Yeah. It's just the important people that could push us farther, they got to play their parts a little harder. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. I'm real big on that. And and, and this is coming from a person where, you know, I don't, you know, handouts. I ain't even. I ain't even asking for that. But you know, <laughs> it's some people out here who who can who can really push this farther than what than what we can. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. With connects and, and and all that good shit. Yeah. Do you think that is a situation where we have gatekeepers in East Texas? Most definitely. You know, I had an interview with Trill Talk, Pill Talk. And he talked about who he felt, you know, he even he even said that he was a gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? He said that he was a gatekeeper. And he read off a list of people who he considered to be gatekeepers. And um, he talked about everybody just kind of doing their own individual thing, but right. also wanting to see everyone as gatekeepers work together. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you think that it's those gatekeepers who could really help push it? I do. But then... You know, following uh, Seiko's story, man, it doesn't really. He went out there and got his own. You feel me? Yeah. Without these gatekeepers, you feel me? So branching out, networking, and all that is uh, is where it's at too. So you can't necessarily just blame it on them. But I feel like our section would be liable if those gatekeepers, ambassadors, or whatever they call themselves, being. Yeah work together and really pushed 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have a foundation. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to have a foundation. I feel that. I feel that, bro. I think, I think, I don't think there's ever enough being done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think there's always a little bit more that, that one can do. You know what I'm saying? I definitely, uh, I definitely, <coughs> excuse me, I definitely can understand that. So, if that was to happen, do you think that that will really help push the culture forward? Most definitely, it'd be it'd be more just more revenue. I mean, it'd be more more access to just just getting a little closer, bro. Just to push, just just more just more of a push, just getting a little closer to what we may not know as far as knowledge wise or being able to get to those contacts that we might not know. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I think along with that, I think man I think the biggest thing, which is one of the reasons why I started this podcast, is exposure. I just feel like if we had more exposure, which I'm starting to see a lot more, <clears throat> excuse me, just exposure. I think that that would help too because at the end of the day, in order to be able to make money, you got to have a customer, and in, in music, the customer is the fan. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So the more fans that you can expose. Your brand, your music, which is your product, to you know what I'm saying, the better you have an opportunity to be able to monetize, which is kind of like right. with the marketing ads and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I remember when I was in Dallas, bro, I was running ads. And I was running ads to like different cities and, and a couple different states. But at first, I really didn't want to run any ads to Dallas because of the, the stereotype of, oh, Dallas don't support. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, you know, I used to have that mindset at one time. And, bro, I started running them ads in Dallas, bro. And people in Dallas know me as an artist, not from me meeting them in person or being at a show, but because of online ads. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, the online marketing and following it up offline, like, is what really helps expand the exposure. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like if we, as artists here, had that exposure – due to things such as running ads and stuff like that, I think that it will really help, you know what I'm saying, make the gatekeepers, whoever they may be, and DJs and promoters and club owners, I think it will make their job a lot easier because now there is almost like a demand for the artist. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like now, now it's like it's not the artist coming to them saying, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, either help me or, hey, this is what I'm doing. Can I get a little bit more help? Now it's like they're hearing it from other people. You know what I'm saying? Without the artists coming right. to them directly. So I feel like that would really help, truly, truly help push it along with that, too. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, for sure, for sure. So are you familiar with a lot of East Texas artists? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm familiar with, with a lot of them, and it's some that I'm not familiar with that I'm now getting help to. Okay, okay. It's crazy because it's a lot of artists, bro. Like, you know, I'm 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 scouring East Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just search of artists like from different sections of East Texas. You know what I'm saying? Because it could be somebody in Lufkin right now doing their thing, and we don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, so yeah. So, so in regards to that, I have a question for you. Running too much. All right. So. Give me your top five East Texas artists, rap artists currently right now. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one that's that's a hell of a question right there. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. I had somebody try to flip that on. Matter of fact, Trey Diz, man, interview coming out soon, man. He flipped that on me, man. But I, I asked him about hip hop. And he actually tried to make me give him a list, man. And uh, I won't steal the thunder, but the interview coming soon. <laughs> already, already. Uh, well, first and foremost, man, you got you got to give, uh, d you know what I'm saying, pay your respect and, and also give props where it's due. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. So I got to throw Seeker out, the, Seiko out there for sure. Okay. You feel me? He, he didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't done something beautiful, man. Real yeah. talk. Yeah. And uh, like I said, salute to him, man. Uh, it's motivation. Yeah. Uh. So he, he's gonna go on that list, of course. It ain't no numbers. Ain't no. It ain't no certain. You know order. what I'm saying? Order for, for, for this. For sure. So I'm gonna throw him out there. He doing his thing. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. 
you can't you can't go wrong putting LZ in your lineup. LZ, Elf, the most versatile artist around here, man. Yeah, real talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's two. Yeah, man. That's two. Yeah. That's two. Y'all might, I don't know if you heard of him, man. I, I got to go with uh, Dougie, man. His his rap name before was J-Rock. You feel me? Okay. But his name is Dougie now, man. He just, he just, he just raw with it, man. Okay. I haven't heard of him. I'm going to have to check him out, though. Yeah, man. He raw. Salute to him. Okay. Okay. That's three. Man, you making this tough, man. I knew it. It get tougher the closer you get to five. I'm starting to see that as a current, as a common trend. Yeah, man. I wasn't going to do this, but I got to put myself on that list. Okay. You feel me? And, and, and all I can say is, you know, tap in and stay tuned. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Oh. Uh, you say stay tuned and you'll see why I put myself on this. Yeah, list. man. I say that, man, <laughs> in, in the most humble way I can, man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that way. I got one more, huh? Yup. You got one more. That was number four. Man. I know it. I know it. That, that, number, that fifth one, that number five. I'm going to have to. This is going to have to be point five, point five to equal one. Okay. On this one, I gotta give a shout out to, because I'm, I'm I I, I'm got, I gotta go off of people who who really working too, you feel what I'm saying? I, I don't go off of just the best music all the time. I got I go off of a, of a networking and all that. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Man, uh, Remo Prime Time, he raw with it, man. Okay, Remo and AJ One K, man, them boys doing their thing. AJ One K. So like I said, I know I got y'all six. I will say this too. I know you only asked for that, right? Yeah. I'm not. Don't look. Look. I'm getting hip to some of y'all. You feel me? Yeah. Be on the lookout for up and coming artist named Young Al, man. Young Al. He, I uh, heard of Young Al. Yeah. Green light go hard. Okay. Yeah. And then recently, bro, even though he just right up the road from me, man, uh, somebody put me on NFL Fat. NFL Fat. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, he nice, bro. Yeah. He nice. Uh. It's 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 a lot, man. A lot. And I don't cool. Where a lot of people looking over, they looking over the uh, Hispanic music scene, man. Shout out to Carry On, man. That boy's raw. So you know what's interesting that you say that because someone commented on one of my posts one day and was like, "Hey, man, like you got to check out like the Hispanic artists." You know what I'm saying? Right. And that was something that I was like, "Man, I really want to start looking into." You know what I'm saying? Like, Carry On, man. And I want to say he posted. I want to say he posted someone else's name. Was it Two Throat or Carry On and Two Throat? Man, you can't go wrong with either two one of them boys. Okay, see, that's hey, how Brown, I know you. That's Brown, how you know Brown, I've been Brown doing Pride my homework, man. Brown Pride Records. Them boys is raw down there, man. That's how you know For I've real. been doing my homework. I knew I was Young tricking. Tony. Uh, uh, man, what's his other cat name, man? Uh, uh, uh Jules, as Rico, something like that. And uh man, I don't know if you know about uh Fat Boy, man. Uh I will say this, you know, not to talk about nobody or think I'm better than nobody, but I will say this. His overall he he went to school. He recording now, he he mixing the engineering, yeah. he's shooting videos, and he's an artist, bro, and I just feel as if uh he could really be a real threat out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With a few, you know channeling you know what i'm saying uh, yeah. uh not saying that 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 i'm better than nobody or, or anything else but you know um he could he could really be a real threat out here bro. he could be real tough yeah. but yeah uh and i gotta give a shout out to them small town ballers man uh like i said i feel i feel like uh i'm representing them as well yeah you know with me just sitting right here you feel what i'm saying from uh, my city really. man shout out to uh, uh bc to uh six oh you feel what I'm saying? Uh, Bobo, uh, Nikki, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man. Shout out to them SFL boys. Uh, yeah, man. And my, and my artist, man, KT Jack. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, shout out to Dub as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can really go, I can really go down the list for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, I know we got time. You know what I'm saying? We got, we got, 
we be looking at time. But yeah, man. Uh, also, man, like I said, man, uh, that list was it was just hard because there's so many artists. But uh, man, uh, like I said, man, Rory Williams, Rory Williams is a very important person in this East Texas. Yeah. Uh, music scene, bro. Um, and he got some soldiers up underneath him, man. I man, Don Fu is a fool, bro. Yeah. I just recently really got on his music, bro. I can say that I shared things here and there and the other, bro. Yeah. But yeah, man, he was he did a mix for me the other day. He, he first thing he asked me was, "Hey, man, have you listened to my tape?" Yeah. I'm like, man, I listened to it, but I didn't finish it. Yeah. Yeah, man. So he did that mix for me. By the end of it, bro, I was like. Bro, you a surgeon out here, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel yeah. me? Then long, man, you can't go wrong with long, long, long gonna sing. Man, how how your ladies, man? You feel what I'm saying? You right. He gonna say he gonna sing to your old lady, <laughs> man. So, but yeah, man, like I said, the list was hard. I'm really going off of off of work, man. It's just kind of hard to go off a of catalog. It's it's kind of hard to go off of album. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got you want to look at everything overall, bro. Yeah. And I feel like I gave the the most elite. Yeah. Top five. Man, that's what's up. Well, shout out to everybody else doing y'all thing. You feel what I'm saying? You got any additional shout outs? Yeah, man. Oh, uh, say, man, shout out to Joseph Smith, man. Like I said, man, you done linked up offline, man. And, uh, yeah, man, you, you done dropped some gems on me, man. So, uh, that's much appreciated, man. Humble, bro. Uh, sure. Shout out to Big Ran, uh, my cousin, Young Prez, who started me out. Uh, psh- Man, them boys, man, shout out to Alto, man. They right there below us, you know what I'm saying? They, I got Alto blood running all through my, my veins, too. My mama from Alto, yeah. you feel me? So the artist I was telling you about, Dougie, man, he from down that way. Yeah. Uh, his brother, man, Trapper, you know what I'm saying? Chucky and them, man, they they all they all making music down that way, man. And uh, we just overlook, bro. You know, it ain't nothing but red dirt and trees out there, man. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Definition of them sticks. Yeah. For real. Shout out to A shout out to Austin, man. My uh my my brother, man. Uh free thriller. My other brother, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh yeah, man. I can go on and on, bro. But uh yeah, that way. That's what's up. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. And uh where can everybody find you at? You can find me on any major music platform, bro. On and then like I said, visuals on YouTube and uh the plan is to drop a video every two weeks. Okay. And, and then, you know, once I get once I get them in the vault like I need them in the vault, every week. Yeah. So just be just be on the lookout for it, you feel me? And all of them going to look like movies. For sure. Yeah, and then it's, just, it's just, you know, I say that humbly, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. check me out. I'm Paoli. I used to Paoli just doing a whole bunch of rapping, man. I'm I'm, I'm bringing I'm bringing the flute, the sax, and, and, and the clarinet, and, and all that good shit out. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, I'm opening up the pipes for them. You know what I'm saying? So. Ah, really? Yeah, like 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 poker say shit. Yeah, we clogging up the pipeline. Yeah. But we finna unclog it. You feel me? And I'm finna put it in y'all face. You know what I'm saying? Straight like that. Ah, really? So just type in Antonio Paola, you'll come up. Antonio Paola, man, look me up. Follow me on Instagram. Like I said, man, I'm kind of old school with it. Not really gonna say old school with it. Like, 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 like you told me. I just been under a rock. Yeah. You feel me? I ain't really been big on this, you know, uh, uh, social media and internet and all the other stuff. Yeah. You feel me? If it was up to me, I'd still be selling CDs out the trunk. I feel. You feel what I'm I saying? Feel. But. As you told me too, shit, QR code. That's I was about it, to say that's that what it QR is now. Codes in the way. Yeah, no. see, see, you didn't know me. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. You feel what I'm saying? And we finna apply that to pressure. Yeah. But yeah, man, uh, that way, bro. That's what's up. That's what's up. Man, it's been an absolute privilege and pleasure and honestly here to talk to you today, bro. Like, to be able to discuss music and entrepreneurship, you know what I'm saying? And how they kind of go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really go hand in hand, bro. It ain't no kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like, they they really go hand in hand, man. And I think the more that, you know what I'm saying, we can tap into both of those, the better. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I truly appreciate you, bro. Just, uh, you know what I'm saying, just your story personally motivates, you know what I'm saying, inspires me as well, man, to, uh, you know, just to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Keep sharing that info. So, so yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely, man. It's been a blessing to be here, man. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what's up, bro. So, I got uh, I got one more question. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me. You know, I know I ask a whole lot of questions. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me. I just be curious. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be the quickest one I ask, actually. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Antonio Payo. Do you know what we do on this podcast? 
We chased that motherfucking bag. We chased that bag, baby. That way. Yes, Lord. Bow. Payola. First thing that's on my mind.